This is a first impression video of the Chinese web drama Jin Xiu Nan Ge, The Song of Glory. Hi, you're watching Avenue X, where a junkie on good storytelling shares her thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. Jin Xiu Nan Ge, The Song of Glory, is a 53 episodes Chinese web drama that's led by Qing Hao and Li Qing. By now, it has aired 24 episodes. This first impression slash a little bit rent video is based on that. But I have to confess, I haven't watched every moment of those 24 episodes because parts of this drama. <sighs> It's just screaming. Fast forward, mm, yeah. Before I let you know my rating for this drama, I would like to do a little bit renting. It's not the whole video, but some of it is really worth doing rentings. And now I have two fans. One is the familiar Cao Duo Wukou. And the other, how do you like Zhe Gou Two fans? It's called Ke Dao Le. This is a weird drama where both these two fans actually work for different parts of this drama to me. So. Let's first talk about a lot of Cao Duo Wukou. At the very early stage of episode 1, you will see our female lead character Li Ge played by Li Qing talking to her Shi Xiong, the brother in the sect that she is serving, about their plans of murdering the uh, prince because he's a bad guy. The thing is, up to that point, they have been planning that assassination for, in their own words, Ears. And these two people grew up together. Their plan together is to assassinate this bad prince. At this point, they would not need to actually talk about it in their own conversations about why we need to assassinate the prince. The scriptwriter is so not skilled that apart from letting the character speak out the things that will literally not happen in reality between the two people, just to the audience. So the audience get the exposition information. Right at the moment, I know this is a failure drama because it means the writer knows nothing about how to write a good script. And immediately after that, we get a scene of our female lead character taking a very lovely bath with her sister within the sect. That scene is just... <laughs> Just, just flag, right? Pure purpose of flag. Because they talked about the sister's origin, about, um, you know, wanting to find her parents, and about the, the huge, huge bangle, wooden bangle that she wears on her wrist. As if, like, they want to just put it in front of the camera and make it, like, a super, super close-up and let people know, look at this! This is gonna be an important prop later. <sighs> And then our female lead character needs to actually say explicitly that this is the thing that you're gonna use to go and find your parents. <sighs> so when I see that scene, after I saw the first scene I just talked about, I have pretty much given up on the quality of the script because I know it's gonna be meh. Then you'll come across once they go to carry out the assassination that um, how they formulate the attack is just like, doesn't make sense. Our female lead is already on the roof of the building and directly like 90 degree below her is the person that she wants to assassinate. And she has the crossbow in her hand. Why don't you just stand there and shoot him in his head and it's done. Instead, she had to jump off the roof, got in front of the guy, like 10 meters away and shoot him from his front side. Where is the logic? If your goal is to kill this guy, you kill him in the quickest, easiest way. And later when they're being chased around in the city by the guards, they were hidden behind this door <laughs> and then looking through this huge crack. And somehow um, those soldiers didn't decide to, to check out that really, really weird looking door. I'm like, no. So that's my little bit of renting. I'm not gonna rent everything I noticed in this drama, otherwise this video is gonna be like two hours long. So if you decide to go into watching this drama, have the reasonable amount of expectation of what type of drama it is. Now, I will let you know my rating. One goat mine slash one land mine. Please note, it's a very subjective rating. Okay, change to this fan. It's a very internet, a uh, very colloquial Chinese online. Literally means when you see a CP, a couple, and you feel like, yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it, and I'm having a lot of fun with watching this couple playing out. Cook actually is the verb that we use for doing drugs. So sometimes, you know, CPs are like drugs. And I want to talk about some of the good things 
that does make this drama at least like not going to the negative side of my rating. First thing, this drama actually looks pretty expensive with its costume with its set design and it does stand the high definition camera when you look closely at the stuff on screen. Some of the stuff looks really pretty, although super unrealistic. For example, the architecture is quite magnificent. The palaces, the rooms, although they totally do not follow any ancient time in Chinese history. For example, if you look at this big hall of discussing political matters for a male lead character, it is huge and traditional Chinese architecture are all made with wood. It is not like you cannot create a very big open room without a lot of pillars supporting it in the middle. But that type of architecture requires very, very advanced techniques. And it just doesn't make sense for this character not really being emperor himself, you know, being able to do that. Also, like there were two huge fountains inside of the room. Who would put two huge water features in a room like aren't you worried about molding aren't you worried about i don't know rheumatism also it has lighting like circling the uh, structure of the fountain i'm pretty sure a thousand five hundred years ago people haven't figured out how to light light underwater then you look at the taifei's palace there's actually a whole side of the room that's basically a mountain like they built the building on the side of the mountain and it has three walls built and one wall is literally the mountain yeah that's a really good place to live like aren't you worried again about safety and comfort. Also, there are two huge, huge, beautiful, but ridiculous fairy statues in that palace. One looks like that. One looks like this. So I have named them. I want to fly and I want the money. I mean, they look great. They look great on screen. Beautiful, beautiful, but literally, it does not make sense. If you're making a fantasy, like a xianxia drama, where they live in the heavenly palace, they have magical power, okay, it's fine. Like you can make the palace as ridiculous as you want to go because people have magic. But you're talking about a fake historical story that's set in human world where people do not have superpowers. So it's pretty, but it's weird. The second thing I really loved about this drama, I said loved, is Li Qing looks so pretty. This is one of her best ancient time setting period drama styling ever. When I think about all the roles she's ever played, whether in Joy of Life, whether in Princess Agent, or even the older days when I was there, Hong Lo Meng, this is the best. She looks so beautiful. Sometimes I'm just watching it for those shots, close up. I'm like, oh, she's so pretty. Makes me very, very happy. Then the third thing that is weirdly pleasing is this thing. The CP, the couple, the chemistry between Qing Hao's role, the prince Peng Cheng Wang, and Li Qing's role, Li Yige. It's the weirdest chemistry I've ever seen, I think, in period dramas ever since I started this channel. It's always jumping between. Uh, it's a little bit forced, it's a bit weird, because these two people are just so different, and their age range is so far apart, and the way the love story is going sometimes is just too sweet and romantic for both of those roles set up. But then sometimes it jumps to the side where it feels really natural, really comfortable, really sweet, even remind me of Love and Destiny, Zhang Zheng and Nini's performance. It has a similar element of a younger, more bubbly female versus an older, uptight male. Obviously, it's not exactly the same, there are still differences, but occasionally it gives me that vibe. I don't know how many people get the same feeling. These are the good reasons that didn't make me rated fully on the negative scale. But there are a couple of really big problems of this drama, so I need to switch my fan. Back to this, that I just cannot ignore. First, dubbing. It feels like every period drama that I review these days, I have to mention this and I have to just shit talk dubbing. For this drama, it is not that the dubbing actors are not doing a good job. I am too familiar with those dubbing actors and actresses. It is the dubbing actor who dubbed Xiao Jingwei, who dubbed Love in Between's male lead, who did Lan Wangji in the radio play Wei Chao, who dubbed Qing Hao. And their voices are so different. Because Qing Hao's voice is 
also very recognizable and I am very familiar with what he sound like in real life. Immediately after which house voice came out of his mouth, my trust in this dramatic world, the believability is destroyed because it's so not him. And it didn't help that Li Qing is dubbed by the dubbing actress who has dubbed this role, this role. And as if my life is not painful enough, the uh, second female lead is dubbed by the very famous dubbing actress who always dubs the Li Ba. And then you get this sort of supporting role ugh, dubbed by the dubbing actor who dubbed Zhang Zhen in Love and Destiny. Especially when these two guys are in the same scene. I hear Wei Chao's voice coming out of Qing Hao's mouth. I hear Zhang Zhen's dubbed voice in Love and Destiny coming out of Li Qing's brother's role's mouth. And then my brain is like thinking Qing Hao's role is a little bit similar to Zhang Zhen's role in Love and Destiny, yet the voice is on the other guy's face. Even by this point at episode 24, I still couldn't get used to my brain's way of looking at those roles because of the voice than what the screen is telling me. Some people may not have that problem at all, but I am a very, very late stage sufferer of that problem. I cannot really fully enjoy this drama. This is a huge problem for me. And finally, the most important, most obvious thing about this drama is its script quality is just child's play. If you want to write revenge story, you want to write court conspiracy, power struggles, cleverness outsmarting each other, this drama setting gives you a very strong feeling of a lot of other dramas you've seen like Nivarna and Fire, even like A Love in Between. If you're a good script writer, you can write the fireworks out of this type of setup and it could be super exciting. But the scriptwriter of this drama just lacks basic techniques and um, even intelligence, how things develop, how the characters act, what they say and under particular circumstances they're in, why would they do certain things. It just often feels like it's written for the immediate enjoyment, the strong feeling. Oh, the female lead slapped across the face of that B-I-T-C-H. How exhilarating for the audiences. But when you think carefully behind the logic of why the character in her circumstance would act like that, it does not make sense. An intelligent person with the motive they have, with the goal they want to complete, would not do such thing. This drama has everybody do things that are just totally eh? 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 like I'm constantly having question marks floating on my head. I'm like, what? Who wrote this? How did these assassins, how did these plotters even survive till this point when the story started? They should have died a million years ago because they're just so stupid. I lose patience very quickly when I watch this drama because I'm constantly being insulted by how the script is just totally not taking the audience's intelligence seriously. As if nobody has watched any drama previously and nobody knows this type of story, good ones, what they look like. I do still continue watching this drama for the moments between the male and female leads. For one thing, I just like really admire that both of them are able to actually speak those lines sometimes that are just really badly written with so much confidence in their trust in their characters. For Qin Hao to earn his nine his milk powder money for his daughter. I applaud for his effort of totally just give himself up to a story that is so different, right, from what he usually does and I think is definitely below his level as an actor and as how capable he is. But anyway, he still did a really good job. It does show that both actors have quite solid trainings and abilities. So even when the story really do not do them justice, they can still make the couple relatively convincing through their very detailed performance of the back and forth between the lovers. Apart from that, I really do not enjoy anything else. Anyway, I've ranted too much. This is my first impression slash a little bit ranting of the Song of Glory. I will not make another video on this drama. That is how far my relationship with this drama is gonna go. Still at the end, I want to say, if you have a totally different opinion, totally valid, don't get offended, not worth it. Drama is just a drama. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.